Hi guys! So in this video, we are going to talk about the phases of matter. So by the end of this video, you will be able to explain the characteristics of the four main phases of matter, and then you're going to be able to characterize the, um, the physical and chemical properties of that matter. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to remind ourselves is that matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So everything around us, everything that we see and that we don't see, the air that we're breathing, if it has mass and takes up space, it is matter. And chemistry is just the study of matter and how the, the matter can change and those, those changes that matter undergoes. Okay, all right, let's get started with the first state of matter. Let's talk about solids. Solid in solids, when, when you have a solid, the atoms are going to be super tightly compressed. They're going to be tightly, uh, tightly together. They're going to, like you can see in the picture here, they're very tightly together. And they're so tightly compressed that they can barely move. So they're kind of just vibrating, like this. They're just vibrating. <laughs> they can't really move very much. They're just like this. And because of this, they are a fixed shape and a fixed volume. What that means is that it does not change its shape and it does not change its volume. So no matter what you do with that, you move it around, you kind of like move it around. Here's my cup. I'm moving it around. I can't change the volume and the shape that it's in because it's a solid. Cool? Okay. Let's talk about here. There are two terms that you will probably hear of in your reading. There's solids can be the crystalline solids or amorphous solids. Crystalline literally meaning that the solids are made up of tiny crystals. And so what's saying is that the atoms inside are arranged in a crystal pattern or regular and repeating patterns. So if you look at it at the microscopic or the, the molecular level, you're going to see that it has this crystal structure. Amorphous solids are the ones that do not. And so amorphous meaning no shape um, or no form. This is where the particles that make up these solids, they're going to be not arranged regularly. They're going to, they're not going to be repeating. They're just going to be willy-nilly there. So um, examples of your crystalline are sugar and salt and snow. So if you look at them under a microscope, they look like little crystals. That's that. But amorphic solids like glasses and pl plastic and silly putty, not so much. Cool? All right. Now let's go to liquids. So in liquids, the particles are going to be a little bit more further apart. They're moving around. They're still kind of close together, but they're still moving around a little bit. So they have some space to them. And because they have some space, this allows them to flow. And it allows them to have a variable shape. And so that's kind of like we think of like, here's my salad. Here's a solid cup. And I have some tea in here. And here's another solid cup. And I have don't have anything in it. But here's inside of it my tea. My tea is a liquid, which means that if I pour it in here, it's able to flow, and it will take the shape of whatever container that it's in. Oops. <laughs> there's, a piece, there's a piece of ice in there. Okay, there's a solid with, a, with some liquid in there. <laughs> okay, so if I pour it back, just the liquid, we'll pretend that the solid's not there. So if we pour the liquid in, if I pour 50 ml of liquid in this container, and I pour it into here, the volume is going to be the same. It's still going to be 50 ml. You're not going to change the volume just by putting it into a different container because it's not compressing any more than what it is. Okay, I just made a mess with that. Whatever, we'll clean it up later. <laughs> okay, so let's go on here. Um, and here you can see in the picture here that you can see that they're a little bit further apart. And then here you can also see in the picture here, a little bit further apart, kind of taking the shape of that container. If we would put it in a taller container, it would take that, that shape. All right, uh, next. Couple of properties of these liquids that are really super cool. One is surface tension. This is an inward force or pull among the molecules in that liquid that pulls them closer together. We're going to talk a little bit more about this in class, and I have a couple articles and a couple examples here that we'll go into later. Um, but just in general, this is where the water molecules are more attracted to each other than they are of the, the other substance touching it. So in this case here, with this water bug right here, this little bug here, and where we say that he is like walking on water, it's because the molecules right where his feet touch, those molecules are more attracted to each other than they are to his foot. 
and so they temporarily just kind of pull together a little bit more a little bit more there so they kind of come closer together and by coming closer together they make more of a solid surface not quite a solid it's still a liquid but just at that little point where it's touching is it's just a little bit tighter a little bit closer together giving it a little surface where it can actually just walk on so you get this kind of walking on and so as soon as it's released those molecules will then disperse back to their normal um, normal space between them and this is also the reason why water beads up when it hits a windshield or hits a piece of glass or something or even <laughs> the tea that I dropped on my that I dropped on my uh, desk here has got a little bead of water is because it is um, it's more attracted to itself than it is to my desk and so it didn't necessarily like flatten completely out I got a little bead of water here uh, the other thing is the meniscus that we talked about in the graduated cylinder that little curve that again is because the water molecules are then going to attract to themselves and you're gonna get this curve here the second property that we'll talk about here is viscosity this is a resistance to flow this depends upon the size and shape of those individual particles and how attracted they are to each other. And so the more resistant that you are to flow, the more viscous that you are. So high viscosity is a liquid that is hard to flow and then or hard to pour, and then less viscous would be easy to pour, like water. So if you think of honey as like the most viscous, of things that we use honey and molasses and then you've got water that is less viscous okay cool all right so let's go on next third state of matter gases so gases these are where particles can separate and move throughout a container because they are going to be further apart way further apart I'm gonna keep it in here this so you're gonna be further apart here and so you're um, going to see like in the picture here, see how they're like zoom, zoom, zoom. So they're further apart and they're going to be moving around. So you have a lot of energy here. They're going to be moving around a lot faster, woo, like this. And so because they're moving so fast and because they're spread apart, they are going to be variable shape and they're going to be variable volume. And so this means that they're going to take the shape of whatever container they're in and they're going to be the volume of whatever container they're in. So if you think about like you can contain like um, compressed helium that we have like this little bottle of helium, maybe in a little tank of helium that you use and to borrow to go and blow up balloons for birthday parties. You got this little bottle of, of right here that's like maybe this and this big around and maybe this tall, that amount, that space, but yet that can fill up like, I don't know, like maybe like 100 balloons or something. So if you think about the volume of 100 balloons is way more than this volume on this little tank here, right? But it's still a gas inside of it. And that's because the gas can be easily compressible. And so that's kind of, it's kind of super cool. <laughs> so um, the other thing that I want us to think about here is a vapor. This, we call a vapor, like you'll, t you'll hear the term like water vapor. So water isn't like, you don't really think of it as like a gas, but it's water vapor is because it's um, gaseous state of a substance that is liquid or solid at room temperature. So if there is something at room temperature, like water, is typically a liquid at, it's always a liquid at room temperature unless the pressure is increased um, or decreased. <laughs> and then liquid at room temperature, and then, but um, when we actually raise that temperature up, then it starts to turn into a gas, and then it's called a vapor. And so that's just kind of a terminology extra that will that you may hear in context. Uh, temperature is going to affect the moving of those molecules. So if you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the amount, um, uh, the speed of them. And that's what we're going to get to here next. Here, uh, We're going to get to that one in the next video. We're going to talk about changing phases um, and phase changing. So that's a little foreshadowing. <laughs> okay, so next is plasma. This is like super cool. This one is super high energy. This is when those, those particles are moving so fast and they have so much energy. They're going to be moving so, so fast that they're literally going to collide and then they're going to break into these charged particles. This is where they're very gas-like because they have variable shape and volume. Um, but they're not quite a gas. They have way too much energy and they're actually charged particles. They're ions. We see this in really cool places like the sun. 
And then also in the Northern Lights. Look at that pretty Aurora. That is on my bucket list. I want to go there someday. So when I see the Northern Lights. <laughs> so that is what's happening. Lightning, um, you will see plasma TVs. Uh, you is this type of, the state of matter. Fluorescent light bulbs, same type of, of uh, state of matter that they use. Super high energy, moving up. Um, okay, so if we kind of look in this one, this schematic here, it leaves out plasma. Mm, I need to draw it in there. Poor plasma. I love you though, plasma. But here we go. We got solids. They're together. There is low energy. They can only vibrate like this. And they're super close packed together. We add a little bit more energy to it. Going to be a little bit more energy. They're going to spread out a little bit here. Moving a little faster. Then we've got gas. A lot of energy. Going to move. A lot of energy moving. And then you've got plasma. Oh, that's where it's crazy. They're all moving. Oh. <laughs> that's where your molecules are. Okay? All right. So, now let's talk about, let's play the game of name that state of matter. <laughs> so here we go. We've got milk. Milk is a liquid. Yay! I know you got that one. All right. Next, lightning. Lightning is an example of plasma. Good job. I know you got that one too. Now we've got this, ooh, look at that. Oh wait, I guess I already hit that twice. Darn it, I just gave it away to you. There we go, I should have covered that up. Gas, you have a gas coming out of here. That's right. Next, we have a gold bar here. That would be nice. And this is a solid, good job. All right, next, I think that is it. That's all we've got, guys. Good job. So hopefully by now you know the states of matter and you know their, their um, physical and chemical properties of them. All right. Thanks for watching. Remember to be good, be kind, be awesome, and always recycle.